What's going on guys if you don't know who I am? My name is Eric Mooney. You guys are watching Mooney Vlogs. Today we're going to be going over back bars and why you should shoot them on your hunting rigs. Everyone stay tuned. Alright, well, if you have no clue what a back bar is, pretty much you got your main stabilizer on your bow here. This is by Torx, by CBE. They sell a whole package we'll be getting into. But a back bar is a second stabilizer that you run in the back. Now, the purpose of a stabilizer is to not necessarily correct what we're doing wrong, but to enhance what we're doing right. So, the main issue with people that aren't running a back bar is, we'll go ahead and take this off. So let's say you just have the one, right? And I go ahead and I hold up my bow to you and without really putting much pressure on, that bow pretty fast wants to fall forward and a bit to the right. So when we go ahead and we add in the back bar, just like that, now I grab that and it sits pretty level. It does want to shift a bit, maybe to the front and it finally goes after a while but that's a lot more steady and you know as I shoot this more I only got this last night but as I shoot this more I can adjust the weight and everything and adjust the angles and it'll get it to where it's sitting just solid still kind of like that so that's that's the pros of this now obviously the con is you're adding a lot more weight at the start, I just ran an 8 inch stabilizer up front and nothing in the back. It's a beast stinger. Went like this. But now I'm running an 11 inch bar in the front and an 8 inch bar in the back. And it actually might even be 8.5. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and show you this uh, kit by CBE that's about $150 that I think is worth the money um, based on how I've been shooting last night and this morning. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so CBE sends you different things, you know, things like this and different screws for for different type of bow set setups. Some have a screw in the back that you can put a back bar on and things like this. This bow only has a front. So um, my very first stabilizer I ever bought came with a little uh, wrench nut thing. Anyway, it's a deal that goes on here and it's started on the inside. What's nice is that CBE's little mount here is uh i guess ingrained i, I don't know how, what you would really call that but it sits in there and then it won't jiggle so pretty much you got your bar um make sure you kind of tighten these screws in here um to start with they come pretty loose and your thing might fall apart like it happened to me but we're pretty much just going to stick this on here i'm sliding mine all the way towards me we'll go ahead and throw on this 11 inch bar now, standard, it comes with two weights on the front bar, two weights on the back bar. Now the weights are just this part here, so you can screw them off like that. On here you'll see there's a threaded end, and what you can do is you can take an Allen wrench and there's a socket in there. You can either spin that bar out more or in, depending on how much weight. So it came with two weights. Um, what they recommend starting with is a one to three ratio. So running one of the weights in here. I don't know off the top of my head how much each weight runs. So I took one off of here because there was originally two and put it on here. So now there's three here. And like I said, I just backed out that one to where it was flush. And then this is what's called a quick release. So this little part here. So once you get into the actual mount, in the mount, it's got a little section for this. So you pretty much just screw on this quick release and you don't want to screw it on too tight. But then pretty much that sits in here like that and then you screw it in tight. But then, you know, let's say you're spotting stocking or, you know, something where you need to take this off real quick, your bow case, something like that. Unscrew it just a bit and it pops off. 
back in tight so with that I'm not going to really monkey with it too much if you back up this screw that's right here that's going to adjust your up and down level of this so it's going to change it either like this or like this and then there's a screw underneath here and that'll change your left and right I'm kind of liking this setup right now where I have it all right, so now we're going to go ahead and take this beast out to 80 yards and start shooting it. I shot really tight groups at 80 this morning. I think it was kind of a fluke, but we'll go shoot it and uh, see how well we can do. All right, well, sorry for the noise of the train. Um, we're going to go ahead and shoot it 60 one time, or, well, a group, so a group of three, um, just to get warmed up real quick. Also, if you happen to run this uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, uh, Final holster. I rigged up my rangefinder. So they got these little straps in here. I took a little uh, clip deal. I just uh, hot glued it to the rangefinder and then wrapped some black duct tape around and now it slips in there. So that's pretty nice. Um, it should be 60. Yep, right on the dot. We do have some wind today. It should be coming from my right to the left. Yeah, pretty much. We're going to have to count for that a little bit. Go ahead and throw on the back tension. Well, the hinge release. I keep saying back tension when it's a hinge. Now, let's go ahead and shoot. Probably want to uh, dial the sight right after I knock this because that would not be good. Okay, so dial at about 60. I just found the sight tape this morning, so hopefully it's right. But Polar, come here. Your straw is always the hardest. Low and to the left. Pretty good amount. I'm wondering if I peaked a bit. If you don't know what that is, it's like right when I release, drop down the bow a bit, which yes, can be due to the weight. And if you do decide to try one of these out, before you truly make up your mind, I'd really shoot it for a couple of days, probably try to run maybe 50 arrows through it, get your arm built up just a bit to stay in the weight. But I did notice when I shot this last night for the first time, you do notice that you are rock solid. What aim them? Hard part is you just you tend to be below the where you want to be. So all right, that one was just a touch low. Looked good left and right. The wind did die down a bit. A bit low and to the right. For me, that's not too terrible of a group. 60. By the time September rolls around, I don't want that to be my group, but you know. Alright, so like I said, three shot group at 60. Not bad, but that. Alright, so we're here at 80. We don't have to worry about hitting the fence because I cleared it quite a bit. Polar, come here. Come here. Don't you just love it when your dog gets in the way? All right, so let's check wind again. So we're gonna go ahead and give it just a couple clicks for wind. So I don't really feel like missing and having to go look at an arrow or look for an arrow. I 
the target. I think I was just a bit low. Thought I hit it. Saw it hit. Yeah. Touch low. Move it up just a bit. It's fun shooting at this distance. Okay. Another one. Too high. You gotta split the difference. It's funny because, you know, I'd say right about this distance is when everything starts to really get amplified. So, you know, it's talking about peaking, so dropping your bow down a bit when you shoot. Probably what happened on the first shot, but I mean, it looks like my sight is off. But just little things like that now start to come into play. Like that one, I tried to focus on leaving my bow arm up so that it wouldn't do that. We're good, a bit to the left. bring those clicks out so I'm not even gonna show you guys that group because that group just sucked we'll uh, go grab the arrows and shoot it again though like I said group wasn't the best but it's fine um if you're curious if you're new and you're curious about my arrow set up here I got gold tip ultralights 340s with uh, just the standard practice tip ends in. Cut to like 29 inches or so, I think. I had a four fletch tack vein on there, the Matrix uh, inch and three quarter vein. But I switched it up to uh, this two inch blazer vein. That one wasn't bad. I don't want to show you guys, but uh, I'll show you this group. All right, well, here's the group. These two aren't terrible. I don't know what happened there. Let's go ahead and try it again. Well, if you're wondering if a back bar is essential, it's absolutely not. But I do think it helps quite a bit. And uh, I'm not showing a very good action or representation of that, but as my arms get stronger to be able to hold up this more this added weight it's going to be better so if you have the money or you know somebody that has a setup I'd recommend trying it Looks like it's right on the edge of the black. And I could tell it got caught by the wind because I saw it in the air, flew a bit like this. And the hard tricky part is all the buildings for my house, not my house, but like our garage and some of our sheds and stuff are right here. So it blocks me of the wind a bit, but then you get out into that open and it's still windy. So being that it flew like this and the wind's blowing this way, and then the feeling the wind caught it. Go ahead and shoot it again. I think that one's low and to the left a bit.
might be seeing things, but it looks like that one's right next to the other one. But I could be seeing things. If you couldn't tell by the glasses, I don't have the best eyesight. Okay. Last shot for the video. Let's make it a good one. Felt good. See how it turned out. Could be seeing things, but that actually doesn't look like too bad of a group. But I guess there's only one way to find out, and let's go check it out and find out for ourselves. Well, that's the group I actually wanted to show you at 80 yards. That's that's not bad. So, um, I think the back bar helps. Like I said earlier, I think if you know somebody that has a setup for it, or you have the money to do so, I'd try it out. The one I got, the CB, the CBE Torque set, about 150 bucks, not too bad. Um, that's the one I got. Another one, if you got the stabilizers already, another good V bar, which is the part that makes the back bar swivel and everything. Uh, the company Shrewd makes one called the Atlas that works really good. Um, but if, like I said, if you don't have all the stuff, then I just go with the CBE uh, Torx setup. I think it works pretty good. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like, I'll really appreciate it. We are so close to 100 subscribers if we aren't there yet by the time you watch this video. Um, right now I'm sitting at 95. so. If you're new, please subscribe. It'll really help me out. I really want to hit 100 subscribers here pretty soon. So please subscribe if you want to do so. Uh, we make more content just like this. every. We try to do it every week. So um, yeah, also leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Until next time, Eric Mooney.